Hello and welcome to this introduction to my layer calculation tools for ProShow. These tools allow you to do things that you thought were impossible, extremely difficult, or very labor intensive to do. As such, they hold the potential to save you a lot of time and effort. Now let's go over the tools themselves here a little bit. First off, up here in the corner is Legend. You have a drop-down list which are uh, identified with the orange outline around the yellow. You put your user information into any of these cells that are yellow. And your answers are going to be in the gray cells. Now the show information allows you to specify how large the slide is going to be. It can be 16 to 9, 4 to 3, or you can customize it to be whatever aspect that you want. Your save zone site is specified here. It's default to what the uh, ProShow program installs with. You can change your language. If you do change the language, uh, be aware that you may need to change the column width to accommodate the change in wording. And also, if you do change, you'll notice that you will need to change the drop-down content to be appropriate to the language that you're using. The next one is the finding section. This finding section is where you enter the layer aspect in. You use this information here, the source setup values, uh, to put in the values that came from the ProShow program itself. The results calculated will calculate the values that you didn't put in in the source setup values. The layer reference values gives you a screen referenced position that is layer referenced. That is, if you, uh, let's say, you know, the corners of a, a layer, let's say 50 50. Well, you get a screen location for that. If you specify 100, then you'll get a screen location for that as well. It doesn't have to be on the layer itself. It just has to be referenced from the layer. Width and height information will give you information about the layer as far as its width and height goes in, full, uh, in terms of non-rotated as well as 90 degrees rotation. Once you get a uh, height and width, you can find the location of the various parts of the layer. That is to say, the sides, corners, and the layer center. You can rotate the layer on a corner, or a side, or the rotate center value. You can rotate it in uh, 0 to 360 degrees, in uh, increments of 100 or uh, increments of 90 degrees and you can find the location of the layer itself or its corner or its side and you can do this for the vertical tilt horizontal tilt and uh, a regular rotation further using the align here you can align the layer or a portion of the layer to some screen location You identify the layer center, or its corner, or its side, and you can align that identified part of the layer to whatever screen location, which is right here, that you want. The layer support information supports the findings here, but it's at 100% zoom. So if I enter in a layer aspect, I get some information here as far as the uh, relationship to the layer of the layer to the screen. I get the aspect of the layer, and all this gets populated too. It tells me some stuff about the layer relative to the screen. It shows whether or not it is larger or smaller than the show aspect. It gives me the layer width and height. It gives me the frame. Uh, scale, or the layer scale, and then tells me 
whether I have a part of the layer that's outside the frame or if I'm not using up the entire frame at 100%. And it will tell me where that unused portion is or what part of the outside that it's on. In this particular case, I have an unused portion of the layer on the left and right sides. If I go to fill frame, then I am extending beyond the frame by this amount. Now, over here where we put this uh, aspect in, as long as these remain zero, as long as the source of the values remain zero, I will get width and height information at 100% zoom. So I can tell what the non-rotated and the rotated size of that layer is going to be. And then also, as I said before, these become valid. As long as I have a height and width, I can find uh, locations of the layer that's rotated on a side or a corner and find that information. And I can perform the align here function. It does all of the scales that ProShow has with the exception of stretch to frame. If you want a scale that is uh, stretch to frame, simply specify your layer as having the same size as the uh, slide. But you can do fit to fill frame, fit to frame, fit to save zone, and fill save zone. Let's go over here to the equal size changes. This tool is useful for creating layers that you're going to use as outlines, borders, or simple frames or shadows for other layers. And it allows you to create equal amounts of change on each axis. You can specify that change starting as a, a percent value a change from the beginning value or you can do a start and end. So for instance you you, you give in each case you give it a starting zoom and then you specify a change that you want as far as percent here and in this case it would be an ending value of zoom. And this, uh, Before we can use this tool, we also have to specify or identify what the layer aspect is. And then when you specify it, you'll get the percent change for each axis and you'll get the starting and ending, or you get the ending zooms. You can specify the change from the X axis or the Y axis. It's up to you. And likewise over here. The percent change is useful in constant value modifiers and modifiers will use the existing zoom and make changes to that existing zoom as a percent of that zoom. And that's why it's, we have the modifier nomenclature above here. The next one is the modifier rotation calculation. You specify uh, what your degree change is, and it'll tell you what that change is going to be in a phase or modifier value. Likewise, you can specify the modifier value, and it will give you the change in degrees. Phase changes are only really useful between the values of 0 and 1. But you can specify it in any way, shape, or form that you want. If I did 50, it tells me what the effective rotation is going to be. Typical waveforms of, um, that, that are used in ProShow, though, are the cosine and sine waves. And you really can't tell the difference between a phase change of 1 and 5, for instance. So you really only want to use between 0 0.0 and 1. But 
you can also specify what your beginning rotation is and that adds to the existing value. Now, in modifiers, a rotation is going to add to the existing rotation that you have set up. Plus, a modifier does not provide you a direct rotation. In degrees, it provides you a value that is a percent of a one rotation. So 100% of rotation is 360 degrees. And that's why a value modifier of 25, which is one quarter, is only going to give you 90 degrees. So this is just a, a useful tool that, uh, uh, for those who are going to use modifiers. Quick and easy way to convert your value into a either a degrees or phase change or modifier value. And a cropping tool is useful in that you can provide the aspect that you're going to crop your image to and the dimensions of the image that you are going to crop. And it will tell you what you're going to need to crop each axis to and how much of a change that is going to be. And you can see here that it's got a ratio 1 to 5, 1 to 5, so I've, it's a verification point. This down here tells you what your actual cropping values are going to be. Now this is important in that uh, because what you can do is you can convert this 3 to 2 axis or, uh, aspect to a 2 to 3. So instead of trying to figure out which goes which, your value is down here. So now I'm cropping this wide image layer to a portrait layer. And this is what the aspect would be. Now if I wanted to do a portrait to portrait, I can do it this way too. I don't have to re-enter the information. All I have to do is invert it. It saves me some typing and potential for errors. That's it in the nutshell. Let's go ahead and do some examples. I have an image here that I want to crop. This image is a 4672 by 3104. Now I'm going to crop this image to, to 3 to 2. That means I need 20. 2069 by 3104. Let's see, 2069 by 3104. Same here. Now let's get the image. Let's crop it. Two zero six nine. Let's drag it around. I'm going to change the size to fit to uh, scale to fit to frame. I'm going to zoom it to 80 and I'm going to move it to minus 20. Let's put that information in here. The layer pan is going to be minus 20 and the size is going to be 80. So I get my information here. Now let's go to the 20, 20693104. That's this image here. This is a 3104 by 4672. Let's crop it. But before we crop it, let's invert this. And I need to crop to 3104 to 4656. So this is going to change to 4656. Okay, let's go to, let's make it uh, fill frame at 30, and let's go to 20. What I want to do is rotate these around the center together. 
I'll just put a marker in here to show. Let's find out what I need to do for the rotate center. Okay, with first off, let's put this in here as 20, and this is going to be 30. Now I want you to notice da -da -da, height is 30 and 80. Oh, let's go. That's going to be fill frame. So both at fill. This is a fit frame. This is fill frame. I have a width of 30 and 80. Width of 30 and 80. I'm interested in the rotate center values. So I'm going to highlight those. And it says I went 66.67 for the left and minus 66.67 for the right. Let's come over here. Go to effects. By default, you'll see this here. If you don't see that little icon, you need to come in here and click on Show Layer Caption Controls. Because if you don't have it on, you won't see the outline, you won't see that icon. So you need to select that and make sure that it's showing your layer outline once it's selected as well as this icon. Now, if you have the keyframe icons on, you might not see that, so you might want to shut that off. And also, with this motion path, and we don't have any motion right now, but you might want to shut it off for the time being too. But that, uh, if it's located right in the center, that uh, motion icon is going to hide your icon for the layer rotate center value icon. This is 66.67. Notice it went right on there. If I get rid of this, it goes right in the center. Okay, let's go to this one. This was a minus 66.7. And again, it's right on the money. Okay, we put the 66.67 in. Copy the next frame. Copy the next frame. Now let's give each of them a rotation. Now let's rotate, and they're rotating just fine. Let's move this up here. We'll make it minus 45, and let's say minus 42. Oops, let's just say 45, minus 42. Eh, let's say 42.5, what the heck. And I'm going to rotate both of these layers on that point right there. Now that you'll find it's very, very quick and easy. 45 minus 42.5. 45 minus 42.5. Equals. Equals. My rotate center is 216.67 and minus 53.13, whereas this one is 83.33 and minus 53.12. Okay, let's go put this in here. I'm going to change this to 216.67. And minus 53.13. 83.33 Zoom out a little bit. They're both rotating together. Quick and easy. These layers look boring. 
let's give them something to make, make them less boring. I'm going to add a shadow and an outline. Now the basic outline here goes from 1 to 5. And I want 5. So now I've got an outline. But not necessarily what I want. So I'm going to create my own outline for the other one. I'm going to move this up here. It's going to be a 2 to 3 or yeah, 2 to 3 layer. I'm going to move it to behind the other layer. So it's going to be minus 20. Okay, so it's going to be a 2 to 3. It's going to be located at minus 20. But I need to find out what zoom I'm going to need to use. I'm going to want that to be a it's going to use, be used as my outline layer. So I'm going to start out at 30% zoom and I'm just going to guess but I, I'm going to try 31% so that means I need to put the X at 31 and the Y at 30.67. So let's try that. So we'll go to effects make sure our layer is selected. We take the zoom lock off, put this at 31, and this at 30.67. Voila! Pretty neat. It's the same size. I've got sharp corners. But I need to uh, I want it to rotate with these when it when these things move. So I need to come back here and I'm going to put this in as 31 and this is 30.67. And my rotate is going to be Oh, I have first off, I also need to specify the value Let's make sure I get the right scale. So I need uh, 209.68 and minus 51.96. Let's try that out. 209.68 and minus 51.96 and lo and behold there it is. Let's zoom out. Oops, I have to specify rotation. And they're rotating together. Now that's well and good, but I'm still missing the shadow. So all I need to do, since I've already got the values in there, is duplicate this. Let's make an adjustment to the blur, because shadows aren't always sharp. I'll make it 35. They're not as hard colored, so I'll make it 65. And I'm just going to change it to black. Then the next thing I, did, I need to do is change the distance. So I'm going to go minus 19.5 and oh, 1. Then come over here, 720, move back, and the shadow is moving with the layer. You can see the shadow is varying as it's rotating around, just like it should.
pretty neat, huh? Now, if you want more information on how to create your own layers, borders, and outlines, just uh, go to my tutorial for those advanced outlines uh, that's identified on the page here. We'll notice one difference, or a couple of differences here, actually. The shadow is more diffuse than it is over here for the Pro Show version. The Pro Show version here is rounded. This is sharp, although I can make this rounded if I wanted to. I can also change the size of this uh, outline here. Now that shadow can be made larger simply by changing its offset. And I can make the opacity be as dark or as diffuse or I, I, as not as dark as I want. I, I can make it dark or light or whatever so that I can give the impression that I'm further away. You can't do that using the uh, Pro Show shadow version or uh, outline. Let's go on to something a little more, a little different. I'm going to move this to the top here. Let's uh, change the size to, oh what, 28. Go here to the settings and we were at fit to frame. I fit the save zone. We're going to change this to fit to save zone. We're going to have a 3 to 2. Let's make sure it's 3 to 2. We'll go to adjustments and we need to crop it. This says it's 4672 by 3104. So I'm going to uninvert these. So I need a 4656 by 3104. So 4656. So it's now 3 to 2. I don't need this anymore. And we don't know what our pan is going to be. But our zoom is 28. I want, and you can move the, the layer around anywhere you want, but if you want to put it precisely where you need it or where we'd like to have it, you need to do some calculations or accept some, some limitations. At the moment, I want to put the upper right corner of this layer to the upper left corner of this layer. Let's go in and see how we do that. It's rotated in the layer center. I want to find the location of the upper left corner. That'll be minus 35, minus 40. So let's put that up here. Minus 35, minus 40. I want to align this layer's upper right to that. So that means that I'm going to need to put in, put its coordinates layer coordinates is minus 45.63 and minus 27.4. So let's put it in here. Minus 45.63 and minus 27.4. As you can see, it's perfectly aligned. The layers, my, uh, the layer I'm moving has its right hand corner, upper right hand corner on the upper left corner of the other image. Let's move this just over here somewhere. 
let's put this layer's lower left in this layer's lower left. Now we move this. Okay, let's go to lower left. Let's make this lower left. Is it going to be at 5? And 40.01. So I need a 15.63 and 27.41. You notice, as I said before, you'll notice that the uh, outline of this layer, the portrait layer, is half on and half off the layer. And this this just shows it. That's hunky dory fine. That gives you an example of how to use the locations. And line two, let's uh let's take this and move it somewhere. Let's uh make it zero here and uh twelve. I'm going to make this at 0 and 12. Now what I want to do is I want to rotate this layer with the other layer, so I need to put its rotation point there. Equals. Equals. And that means I need a rotation center of 211.64 and minus 216.27. Try that out. 211.64 minus 216.27. See how easy that was? Let's copy the next keyframe. Let's give it a rotation. Let's zoom out. And it's rotating with them. Very quick, very easy. Let's try something different. I mean, really different. We're going to leave it at 0 and 12. We're going to reset this, and we're going to do the upper left corner. We're going to rotate it on the upper left corner. Let's do this. And we're going to rotate this by 90. Let's find out where that's at. I'm going to delete this because I don't need it anymore. We're going to leave it at 0 and 12. Let's rotate. It's still at 28%. I rotated the layer on its upper left. and I rotated it 90 degrees right here 90 degrees so I'm supposed to be uh, let's find that the rotate here so it's going to be minus 17.72 and 18.3 let's bring in a little helper, helper layer here Set it to fit the safe zone and 28%. Is that what I'm using? Yep, 28%. Let's change the zoom or the opacity to 50 and let's move it above the layer. My position is supposed to be. Minus 17.72 and 18.3. Voila, it's there. Let's do a minus 90. And that changes our location to minus 3.54. And 
and minus 19.5. Let's try that out. Let's move this first. Minus 3.54, minus 19.5. There we go. Now let's try something different. Let's say I wanted to do the rotation center at oh, 45 minus 45. So I would come over here and we're going to leave it at minus 90. We're going to say that I'm rotating on the rotate. Now I want to locate the layer center and this says that it's going to be at minus 16 by 32 and 0 0.660 but that's not the whole story yet. You see rotate center is based on uh, by default on the layer being um, or having a rotation center that is relative to the screen center. And by specifying my own rotate center, I'm probably going to be providing a user-supplied rotation center on the screen somewhere. Now, I don't need this anywhere, but I probably will need this. I don't want to change the pan, so I don't want it. I don't want to change the zoom, and I'm not using rotate center, so I need this. So let's put this in. 9.57. And 0 0.66. Now we come down here. Now we can use this. And that is going to give us 15.95 and 17.67. Let's move this first. 15.95. And 17.67. Now let's go down here. Now remember, we're using a rotate center of 45 minus 45. So we need to put that in here. 45 tab minus 45. Perfect. Awesome, huh? You can, if you wanted to, you can also find out where the uh, upper right corners are uh, or the sides. You could do the same stuff with tilt. You know, if I tilted uh, at 90 degrees, this says, uh, well, it's going to give me the layer pan. It's not going to give me the corner. But 9, 5, 7, and 12. So if I did uh, oops, I don't want that. 9 9.57 and 12 and I deleted this Made this a minus 90, and there you go. Very, so it can be pretty useful. Okay, that concludes this uh, introduction. Any questions, give me a call, drop me a line.